So as I was saying, welcome to this Parasite Expert Academy Flashes, uh, our third session. We have a special guest today as, as usual. And uh, before we move into introducing our special guests, I'll um, share a few uh, introductory words about what brings us here to this um, Parasite Expert Academy Flashes. And you are Camilo de Mendonça. Yes, indeed. My name is Camilo de Mendonça. I'm Global Head of Rumin and Antiparasitics at Beringer Ingelheim. Okay. So, some important um, housekeeping aspects. Um, we'll have a, an event chat box that you can reach and you can um, write your, your questions or comments in that chat box to our guests. Um, please keep your microphone and camera disconnected so to have a better um, user experience in this session. And also finally, um, we'll ask you in the end of this meeting to provide a short feedback through an interactive poll system. We'll, we'll guide you through that, it's quite, quite easy. So what are we doing here? We are especially here to listen about parasitology, specifically ruminant parasitology. And uh, as I was mentioning, this is the third uh, webinar, th third session, which we call flashes. So it's short, short sessions um, to drink a bit about um, ruminant parasitology. The Academy was created to learn and refresh the knowledge about most up-to-date topics in ruminant parasitology from macro trends, which we heard about from Professor Kaplan and uh, Dr. Gustavo Sabatini in the first two sessions, to also treatment, treatment solutions and methods of, of parasite control. So we had also a first edition of Parasite Expert Academy in 2009, which was a success. So this year, to the pandemic, due to the pandemic constraints, we're organizing instead these this flashes. We'll take around 30 minutes. We are, uh, and forgive me for those that heard already this twice, but uh, um, we're going to do these sessions or conduct these sessions from already since September to February 2021, once every two weeks, usually on a, on a Thursday. Um, afternoon um, Central European time. And so we hope you enjoy and share our passion for ruminant parasitology um, because definitely Beringer Ingelheim wants to make uh, parasitology um, control simple and sustainable and we hope again that you enjoy. And with this I um, pass the word to Dr. Gustavo Sabatini. Thanks Camilo. So, hello everyone, welcome everyone. And a special welcome to Fabiano Silva, our guest today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, Fabiano. So uh, we, we, uh, we're going to do it different today, right, Camilo? We, instead of a, uh, you know, a presentation, we, we're going to have a uh, conversation with, with Fabiano. We thought that we could try this, this, new, um, this new way of uh, exchanging and, and uh, information about ruminant parasitology. Indeed, yeah. Gustavo, today we're going to have more uh, a conversation. So it will not be the classical PowerPoint presentation, it will be more about this conversation about how, how BI innovates in, in ruminant parasitology. Yeah. So, so Fabiano, um, I know you are um, Brazilian and I know you are a vet, but can you tell us a little bit of your of your career, at least your, you know, the highlights of your career? Of course, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I'm very humbled and honored by the invitation to um, start talking about uh, innovation in parasitology. Um, I will try to uh, make it uh, uh, simple. It's uh, quite a complex process when we we are involved in it and looking from the inside. So I'll try to give some perspective to, to everyone today. Um, so hello, my, well, my, like you said, Gustavo, I am a veterinarian by training, I'm Brazilian. Um, I've been in the US for the past five years and I've been in the industry, in the animal health industry for 20 years. It's actually 20 years this October that I started working in the animal health industry. Um, I pretty much jumped out of college and university directly to the, to the industry um, and work in, in different companies in Brazil. 
um, worked first with agri brands Purina. So Purina was a an animal health company back in the day in Brazil. I worked there. Then the company got spun off and became a local company. I stayed there for for a few years. Then I left the company um, and started my own CRO, uh, contract research organization, to run studies uh, in the country. This was around 2005, where some of the regulations were tightening in the country. So there was a, a need for studies uh, with, the, with the target species. So that's where I kind of started moving into the R&D world. Then from the CRO, it really uh, I had an opportunity to come back to the industry and I came back to the industry. I joined Ford Dodge and that's where we, we got to know each other, right, Gustavo? So we come, we come a long way working together. Um, um, so I, 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 I worked with Ford Dodge for a few years. Then I joined Siva, the French company, worked with them for another few years. And then I had the opportunity to join uh, Behringer um, uh, at that time as Marial in Brazil back in 2012. So I've been with the company for eight years. When I joined Marial Beringer uh, now, uh, it was to run um, projects in Latin America specifically. Um, and of course, a lot to do with parasitology. And then um, in 2015, I had the opportunity to, to come to the US and work in, in, in global R&D. Uh, in one of our research sites in the Midwest, in the United States. So I, that's where I really can say that I was really immersed in parasitology because that's a very important site for our parasitology network. And what I will try to explain today in this conversation, we're going to have a very cool chat. It's that we, um, we have a very interesting network of parasitology in, in, in BI, and we're always finding ways to make it more efficient. And that's why we are in the middle of uh, a change right now in R&D, in the organization, try to make it the most efficient as possible and bring solutions to the market as soon as we can. So very and excited great, to, uh, to be here. Well, very excited. Well, well, what do you do exactly nowadays? Okay, so <laughs> very important. Uh, well, I, I'm today I'm Global Head of Pharma Clinical R&D. Um, clinical R&D inside Beringer is the, the group that runs um, that generates efficacy and safety data with our patients, with our target species. So when we translate to parasitology, we are the group that is running the studies um, to evaluate the efficacy of our, of our compounds. Um, but not only that, in our sites, we also rear uh, some of the parasites um, that allow us to test them on our patients. So essentially, it's a very uh, interesting um, um, feature that we have, that we have to, w whenever you have to run your studies with the paras parasites, you essentially, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that the, most of our audience knows that, you need to expose the, the target species, the, the, our patients, the animals, to the parasites, and then use the product to see if, if you're, 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 the product's being effective. So that's, that's what we do in our group. Um, the pharma clinical R&D group is spread all over the world. We have 120 people in clinical R&D, and we are a small portion of the entire R&D organization. The entire R&D organization is comprised of uh, 1,200 scientists and support staff all over the world. And pharma clinical, we are about 120, so essentially 10% of the organization today. And we not only do parasiticides, we do also therapeutics. But we parasiticide, it's, it's uh, I would say that today it's roughly 65% of, of pharmaclinical R&D today of the activities that we do. So essentially that's, that's, that's what we do. And that's, that's very insightful. And, uh, <clears throat> and thank you for, for being with us today uh, to share your thoughts. You mentioned about uh, you know, tackling some challenges, some main challenges, particularly in parasitology. Um, as our BI global innovation is, as you mentioned, adjusting as well to that uh, to those challenges in our own structure, um, how you're tackling those those challenges nowadays? Well, um, what we're, we're well, everything starts, let's say, with a good strategy, a good basis, and um, more recently, what the innovation group, uh, the R and D group, did was invite several experts from um, several areas, including parasitology 
to discuss what are really the unmet needs out there. Um, and that became the foundation for us to look at the future now and create a strategy for us how to tackle those challenges and to the next 10, 15, 20 years ahead. So we're really looking at how we will be delivering products in 2030, 2035. So a long-term view. Um, the, the challenges we're talking about are like resistance, yes, ecotoxicity, yes, food safety. So we started to build this, rebuild this again. Um, if we and without without of of course forgetting our past, we had very successful a successful history until now that brought us to a leadership position worldwide in parasitology. But now, how can we maintain and reinforce that with the challenges that are happening right now, how these challenges will impact how we do stuff right now and how we will deliver in the future. So we started with that um, and then we started to reshape the organization and we are in the middle of this right now. Um, as far as challenging resist, uh, as the challenge of resistance, what we are trying to do, it's really expedite the research for new compounds. Um, we are working, we, we set a, a, a collaborative effort with our research colleagues that are also part of the R&D group. And we are providing them with the parasites that we rear so they can work with, uh, with the phenotypic screening. And with that, we ramp up our efforts to expedite uh, new compounds, the discovery of new compounds, testing of them, and then we can bring the products to the market sooner. So this is one piece of the strategy. The other pieces we're trying to open our minds much more and look into different therapies um, and uh, new uh, ways of, of uh, treating for parasitic diseases. And this is also a piece of, of the puzzle that we're trying to, to break right now. So do we rely only on, on internal resources to tackle those no, challenges? No, not really. And, and actually that's something that uh, broke the news yesterday. Uh, we just, uh, um, 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 established a partnership with the from Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. This is an institute that is specialized in, in um, working with biological resources to create uh, uh, um, um, compounds to treat parasitic diseases, par uh, parasites, I'm sorry. Um, and they have been working with human pharma and with crop protection for, for years. And we are the first veterinary company to have a, 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 an agreement with this group. This was announced yesterday. It's, it's, it's very new uh, to, to everyone, even to myself. I, I, I learned about this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, and we're very much looking forward to, to seeing what, what's, what's going to come out of that, uh, that partnership. Um, I think will be very, very useful for us going forward and very innovative. We're really excited about it. And especially Fabiano <clears throat> talking about, you know, uh, finding new ways of environmentally sustainable tools, right? Because I understand that's one of the, the pillars as well of that partnership. So what, what's make, uh, what makes um, BI, Beringer Ingelheim, and Health R&D different from, from well, other companies, let's say? Um, I think the first thing that I think it's very important and that we are a very different company than the other companies out there. We're a family-owned company, which makes, which helps us and actually allows us to have a long-term view. Um, this is, I think it's the most interesting thing ab about us in terms of having really a long-term view and setting our goals. And, and that's where we wanna go very firm, very strict uh, uh, way of uh, planning and, and, and delivering. This is one topic. The other part is that we're, on the top four companies, we are the only one that is both family owned and also has a human pharma side. Um, this really makes us unique that what type of technologies can we tap from a human pharma side? And we're all right, we have been doing this and we will keep doing this is actually the plan going forward for, for, for our, our global innovation strategy. And so this would really makes us different. And, and also, we have a very, very, very strong network of sites and expertise. So we, what we have been trying to do since we 
we merged Maria, we brought Maria and Bergen together is how to enforce it and make it more agile and more efficient. And I think we're really in the brink of taking that uh, uh, final step and, and put us in the, in the right, right track. This is, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, this, yeah, this is, um, this is uh, interesting, in interesting to, to see. So, um, so, as you mentioned, apparently, or we know that the, the R&D organization is, is very robust, right? So, so, but this, is this uh, enough to bring really innovative products to, to the market? That's that's a good question, Gustavo. Um, I think I think yeah. I think it's it's it all it's all about the people, um, as well. People, people, places, people, and infrastructure. We have a very 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 strong team. I'm very proud to be part of it. Um, we learn every day. We work very cooperatively. Um, and I, I I gave a few examples. The fact that we in clinical work to rear the parasites, study the parasites on the target species, but also help the research group to use the parasites to help with the, with the screening of new compounds. So we have this cooperation spirit. Um, I think what we're always trying to do, we're never um, comfortable in our position. I think we're always challenging ourselves and we have this mindset of challenging ourselves. Uh, within the organization to try to always find new ways of doing things. Um, one example, I think, it's also having an a, 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 a initiative like this, where all it's an initiative that we have customers out there, KOLs out there, ourselves from the company, marketing, R&D, we're always getting together and, and finding opportunities of learning and helping each other. So I think this is, it's a, it's a very powerful, let's say, spark on the on the fire when we have other 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 factors in people and places as well. Um, and of course we need to have a very good and robust process that try to shave off bureaucracy and we are a very big company. So moving an engine with in our organization of R&D with more than a thousand people, how do you make sure that this a thousand people more than a thousand people are working together in a very complex process that which is developing products to deliver the product timely. So it's that's why you have to have the mindset of challenging yourselves, challenging ourselves, giving each other honest feedback and moving on to the next task and, and delivering. So all those things are very important and that's what we're trying to do. But yeah, if you just put the right the right people with the right mindset and the right structure and and the, the, the good a, a very strong strategy, you, you will deliver. But the, it's always a challenge to keep going because this is a lengthy process as well. Thank you, Tapiano. We have already, one of the, of the uh, benefits of this um, interactive sessions is also we to take some questions from, from our participants. We have already two questions. Uh, maybe okay. we can um, bring them to you now. So one of them is about prioritization. When, what are the, um, how do you prioritize innovation of different compounds or solutions uh, to lead to initiation of a new research project? That's one. And the second one is why SBI never developed uh, biological control strategies for parasites in ruminants? Uh, well, let me start with the second one. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we, we should think about that and we are thinking about that. Um, why we never did that before it's i think it's a comb combination of factors and somehow we loop into the the first question it has to do with priorities as well so i think one of the most important things that the company can do is choose 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 your battles right choose your priorities and then how do we prioritize it's it's really a a, a mix of marketing uh, uh, assessment of the opportunity and then when the marketing assessment comes is also how the market looks like and how we will position a future product in that situation. So that helps us have a priority. And also our own capability of delivering the product, our own probability of success, technical success with that project. And uh, so it's a combination of factors. It's not only one single factor to, to put the priorities in place. 
Um, what we will be trying, what we are trying to do now is change that stigma of priorities because this can really be sometimes difficult for some of the teams working in different projects. It is clear for people at the more higher levels in the company to say this is a priority, but for teams that are working on a project that maybe would not be considered as high as a priority of another project, you can create some, some, some morale issues. What we're trying to do going forward is really have a, a list of projects, a pipeline that each and every project has, we are equipped totally to deliver that project on the timelines that we are set. So in essentially we will have more of a condensed list of projects that they are all very much prioritized to be delivered rather than having, oh, this is the first one and this is the second one this is the third one. We're trying to have a more of a, an objective uh, uh, view of this going forward. Yeah, this, this is a um, good um, description of what happens with Fain R&D, right? But, but as, a, as a global company, perhaps Camilo can uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. There are uh, strategic drivers, and, but basically what we have, uh, oh, one of the main drivers for us to develop new products is the attractiveness of the market, of, of the segment. Right, Camilo? Indeed, and, and of course, uh, we had a discussion in, in, or that question in the poll in the last session about what are the main parasites that uh, the, the people attending this call uh, find. And, and, and uh, we, we base ourselves in a lot of insights, what we think are the main concerns and unmet market needs. And based on that, of course, uh, if we deliver, you know, solutions that we can add value to, we definitely, you know, work together with R&D to, to, to provide them. So, and that brings me to the next uh, question I would have for Fabiano is, uh, you know, how does it work, this um, new product development in BI, particularly in parasiticides, because I understand parasiticides is a big focus for Beringer, not only for ruminants, but actually for, for all species, right? Yes, yes. Well, um... Essentially, we, we in, 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 inside R&D, we have five main phases. So um, what the, the phases are early research, research, development, full development, and then launch. Um, and in early research and research, what we are trying, in early research, we are trying to work with the ideation. So, okay, we need a new parasiticide what it will be this parasite, parasiticide for. We're talking about an ectoparasiticide, an endoparasiticide, an endectocyte. How do we want to, so this is really happens in early research where we have I, the ideation and ident identification of the, the compound or therapy that will, will help us to uh, fulfill the, the, the idea. In early research, we, we work with that. That's really early in, this, in, the, in the step, in the whole process. And then in research, we're already starting to approach what we call proof of concept, which is for other industries is prototyping. So essentially having an idea of what a product would look like and then start looking at efficacy and safety in the target species in our patients. So for a parasiticide, that's when you after testing the compound in the lab in early research, you just essentially have your ticks there. You just put your, your compound and see if the ticks are, are dying. And then you do an assessment to move to the next stage and go to the target species to our, our patients, essentially, in a small scale, control scale. So that's where we have the beginning of the process. After research, that research phase, we, when we move into development, we are already seeing that we know what the formulation will look like, what pharmaceutical form we're talking about. And if it's a pour on, it's an injection, it's a oral product or whatever, it, we have to think about other ways of doing that. And then we are re reaching development. And then we are talking about scaling up and thinking about from an industrial mindset, how we can take that bench product really to a manufacturing to sell millions of doses, things like that. This is the development piece. And then once we move to full development, we pretty much know all that. And we have a very, we, 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 don't, we don't doubt ourselves anymore about what the product will look like, anything. It's the most information that you had gathered in the previous phases. 
and then you're just full, the full development phase it's really there's the you see the goal line you see the end of the line you know where that that's the finish line and you just time yourself and then you just go so it's really a work of a project in terms of project management you know what your deliverables are when you're going to deliver what studies you're going to be doing you start working very closely with the regulatory agents that's a big step of what we do and then you're ready to cross the finish line and then once you have close to the launch that's when you start doing the handover to different groups operations that we call manufacturing operations to start thinking about the, the, the production of the product the launch of the product and essentially that's the handover that we, we, we call so that's that's how it works a very high level explanation but uh, that's how it works very very complex and length I mean, um, uh, cross-functional teams working together to only one go yeah um, so you 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 mentioned about um, thinking different ways of, you know, uh, applying pr uh, uh, products. So that takes me or brings me um, to a question to you. So how how do you see parasites being controlled in in the long term future? That's well. That's that's a, a cool question, Gustavo. Um, I, I I mean, I, my own personal view. Um, I think we need we need change in the way we do things, um, and I think we in the industry has we have a very a great opportunity to try to to help with that. Um, I think we were we'll, the whole idea of long long acting products things like that. I think they are very convenient, so it's really difficult to move away from that. So I don't think that 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 will disappear. But uh, at the same time, you have regulatory agencies, um, environmental uh, 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 bodies really going kind of uh, against that in a way. So you need to figure out how to, to move through that. Um, I personally see an opportunity where we're going to probably be using less products and working more with services to try to take a holistic view of the property, the farm, and then help the farmer and the veterinarian working with the farmer to make good decisions about the parasite control. And then the different tools, the products will be one tool with a whole box of, of tools. Um, so that's one piece. The other piece could be very cool technologies that uh, were, some of them were working on, some of them will start to working on. There's always new cool things happening out there. Um, and then we're trying to tap. So the, it was mentioned like biologicals, why not? And can we break away from the mindset of having 100% control all the time to something different? Why not? And we should, I think it's a mindset change for everybody across the, the chain. Um, and then maybe cool ways of delivering products in the future or um, there are massive ways of doing mass applications. We see that, for example, when you look at uh, poultry, it's the way that they do mass applications. It's just, wow, can we do something in ruminant to do that as well? Some of the mass application, what can we do? Is there something that we could do? Um, so I think there are many, many ways. So it's difficult to even grasp what, what, what the future looks like. Um, um, but th I'm just putting my head of being a futurologist here and trying to give some of my, but this is very personal. This is the way I see the industry going. I think it's really a change. What the most important thing is here, the change of mindset that we have to have. It starts mm -hmm. here. And then we can, with industry changing their mind, farmer changing their minds, academia, and making sure that we're affecting our communication. And the farmer at the, there sees that that's the, I can solve the problem by doing this. If it's effective, they will use. But if they don't see and you, it's, the, it's just words in the wind. So we, that's how, how to really tangibilize that, make it tangible. It's, I think it's a challenge. Um, thank you, Fabiano. We have a couple of other questions here. I'm not sure if we have the chance to answer. Maybe we can try and then close with the last question. Um, uh, the, one is related more or less with the same question we had already is, uh, are we, looking into biologicals or vaccines to overcome resistance to chemical compounds. Another one is, 
also related with resistance. What is our strategy to control resistance in, in gastrointestinal nematodes, particularly like Cuperia or Amoncus? And the third one, which I also find it very interesting, is how the grazing trends, so for more intensive and less and more indoor and less outdoor, shaping the entail mentics market and driving innovation strategy. Oh, wow, well, great questions. I think I will, I will answer very simply saying that we're looking at all those things because it's, it's, if you're thinking about innovation and you're not looking at any of those things, you're not really doing innovation. So we're looking at all those things. Um, the grazing aspect, that's something that uh, in, in some of our research sites, we have opportunity to look at that. Um, and we, we discuss quite, we always discuss quite a bit how to use some of our uh, uh, um, um, capabilities of doing internal research in, in, inside our own infrastructure that we could tap into looking at the grazing seasons. And um, we actually work a, a bit with that in, with our marketing colleagues uh, uh, a few years ago in some of our, our, with our existing product. So that we are looking at that. The biological piece, absolutely. Like I said, we're open to new therapies and the biological use, um, I mean, vaccines, whatever we could do, biopharma, we will have to look at that. And actually, that's an expertise that BI has with biopharma. So in human pharma and with, with our partnership goes in that direction as well. Um, and I, I think, yeah, we're looking at all those things. We, we, we absolutely have to. And we, we're not shying away from that. And with the help of you guys in marketing to give us some of the trends and we're working together, partnering up in an opportunity like this to hear from 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 the audience, I think it only reinforces that. that and maybe one, one, one question as well is, I mean, we have quite a few experts in parasitology in this call, I'm sure, from all around the world. Interested in knowing, I mean, if they would want really to reach out to, to a company like, like ours to partner with some idea they would have in their academia or in their practices, how do they should go about it? To, to where, which door should they, should they knock on and how should they propose a partnership to a company like Burning? You're in uh, parasitology discovery or, or research. Excellent question. So one of the changes we're having uh, within the company now, um, which is a very um, interesting one, a very exciting one, the, the business development and licensing uh, uh, area of uh, BI Animal Health is uh, now part of you know, the innovation uh, uh, team. So we are working very closely, it's, it's all one big group inside uh, R&D now. And there is actually an email that you, people can send an email to partnering for animal health at beringer ingelheimcom with, with uh, proposals of ideas. There is like really a, a filter the, the, the experts in BD take a look at if that really matches to our strategy and what we want to invest in. And then we, we have a discussion on how to proceed, but there's, is, uh, there is a way of doing that today with the company. So there's, there's an email. Um, and of course, we encourage people if they have ideas and they, whatever they, the ties that they have with the company, if it's someone out there, KOL, that works with you guys or works, works with us and come with an idea to ourselves, we always discuss. But that, that's, that's, this email also helps with, with, with kind of a, being a channel of communication to the, to the to BI and, and, and the business development area. Yeah, there's a, there is, Camilo, there is an important um, uh, message in the chat. So, uh, perhaps, Fabiano, you can write the email address in the chat box okay. so people can get access to, to it. I'm just conscious about the time, Camilo. It's, it's, uh, Please, Gustavo, we, we, we can we, go to closing remarks or questions. Or I'm, I'm writing the, the email right now. Thanks, Fabiana. Yeah, it's. It, it, I think it's a. Uh, it's a, a. A success development comes from a partnership among all departments within a company, and so far, um, I think we 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 are doing well. And if there is, I think this audience can expect uh, great things in, in in the new in the new. In the long term, medium term, long term future, let's say. So let's let's just uh, not not let everyone too excited about it. 
but in the near future, we, we hope to have news uh, for, for everyone, right? Yeah, that's, that's what we always, in, for us are working in R&D, when we see a product which is the market, it's just, I mean, the work years that people are pouring their hearts and souls into it, it's, it's really, I think, I think it's, it's one of the best uh, um, um, feelings that we can have. It's really a, an achievement. So um, I, I mean, I'm totally biased working in R&D, but it's really something that we will always strive for. It's really the passion of our people working out there to deliver products. So you, you can all uh, help our farmers to have more sustainable ways of treating parasites, help with the company to uh, fulfill its mission of helping our customers and help you guys to deliver great, cool uh, campaigns, ways of selling our products and selling our solutions. I think that's that's what we're here for. So it's always what we're trying to do and we'll keep trying to, to support uh, uh, our customers out there. Thank you very much, Dr. Fabiano Silva, for being with Thank us. Thank you. Um, I will stop recording and I'll ask one last question from the attendees.